Hello doctors, uh, this is Dr. Tan uh, and as a part of uh, our course we have two days to discuss uh, all the topic that you might face in the PACES exam. One of the challenging topics that uh, most of the candidates are worried about is the hemiplegia cases. Let me start by explaining that the most common three cases that you might find in your exam will be the hemiplegia or multiple sclerosis or peripheral neuropathy. Uh, there are many other possibilities, but still these three are the most common. So you need to master these um, diagnoses, okay, these uh, uh, topics in order not to lose any marks uh, if any of these cases appear in the exam. Just to make it short and to make it easy, you will go inside and you will find a patient sitting there and they will tell you just examine this patient. The order might be examine this patient neurologically. And usually this is a shock. Shock because you can't do all that in six minutes. So usually what I'm advising, just ask the patient to raise his arms you will notice or raise his both lower limbs and you will notice that he has an uh, uh, unequal uh, elevation of the arms or uh, of the legs. Okay, so and you might be lucky and see it is obvious that the patient has a mouth deviation and that's it. Okay, so the question here, the first part of your case solved, this is a hemiplegia case. The next question will be, where is the lesion, okay, that caused this hemiplegia? And the third question, usually this will be asked by the examiner, which is what is the cause of this uh, lesion, okay? So again, just to make it easy, there is two possibilities for the hemiplegia to happen. The first one is having the problem in the cortex. The second one is having the problem in the internal capsule. And the third one is having the problem in the brainstem. Actually, you don't need to know some details. I mean, in the exam, you don't need to specify which part from the internal capsule. And it's enough to say this is a brainstem. If the examiner went beyond that, it will be an extra question to ask, which part of the brainstem do you expect to be affected? And this will depend on which cranial nerve is affected. Okay? So, simply, I will go to the station. This is the patient, mild deviation, okay? Or the position of the lower limb that, as I discussed before, you will see a picture of upper motor neuron in the lower limb. You will ask the patient to raise his arms, raise his lower limbs. You will notice that this is hemiplegia, okay? Then, the first option is having the lesion in the cortex is not that common because the patient usually with the cortex infarction or bleeding, it's usually um, the patient will be critically ill. But still, usually what you will find, there is affection of the cortical uh, functions. I mean, the patient may have aphasia, prokaphasia due to affection of uh, the cortex, the cerebral cortex. So there will be a cortical affection and this is not common at all in the exam, okay? The other option you would ask yourself a question. Is there any affection of cranial nerves or not? Just the rule. If there is no affection of cranial nerves, so think about the internal capsule, okay? If there is affection of cranial nerve, you still can think about the internal capsule and brainstem. Usually the example I'm giving for that is, it's like crossing a very crowded road that's filled with cars and you want to run with closed eye. It's impossible because there is many, many cars running there. So 100% you, you will be like uh, hit by uh, the car. So it's the same for the cranial nerves, okay, or for the brainstem affection to escape the cranial nerves, to the cranial nerves not to be affected, okay? Just for your information, we have a two, uh, the upper motor neuron tracts are two components. There is corticospinal tracts and there is corticobulbar tracts. The corticobulbar is going to the cortical nucleus 
and the corticospinals going down, okay, and crossed at the medulla and going to the opposite side. And this is important point as well in localization. So again, I will go back. I like repeating. I will repeat it. There is cranial nerve affection or not. No cranial nerve, this is internal capsule. And they will tell you how to know which side, okay? There is cranial nerve affection. We still have two possibilities. It can be internal capsule and it can be a brainstem, okay? Then the next question, if it is a intern, now there is affection of cranial nerves. So I will ask myself, is it crossed or not? And what I mean by crossed, it means that if the cranial nerve affected is on the same side of the affected part of the body, okay, so this is called uncrossed. This is called uncrossed. And if they are in the opposite side, for example, I have a weakness on the right side of my body, okay, and affection of the left facial nerve, left hypoglossal nerve. So this is called crossed. So if it is crossed, okay, this is a brain stem. If it is non-crossed, which means the facial nerve affection and the body affection are on the same side, so this is uncrossed and this is internal capsule. And I will go to the next step, which is how to decide which part, which side of the cranial nerve is affecting, because sometimes this is confusing. So what can I do in this case? I will go and remember the wrong rule, which is the tongue never lie. But the t actually in the neurology, it is not as the real life. The tongue never lies in the neurology. It never lies. Why? Because if the tongue going to the right side, so the right hypoglossal is affected. If it is going to the left side, the left hypoglossal is affected. So simply I will ask the patient, can you please open your mouth and show me your tongue? If you see that his tongue is deviated to the right side, so this is a right uh, hypoglossal affection. If the patient had the weakness on the right side of his body, so this is uncrossed, so the affection is in the internal capsule. If the opposite, so this is the cranial nerve. What if the hypoglossal is not that obvious or not affected and I'm going to think about the facial nerve? So in this case, it is the opposite because the mouth will lie. The mouth going to the opposite side. The mouth going to the opposite side. Okay, so the mouth will be, if the mouth is deviated to the left side, tell yourself that the right facial is affected. So again, the right facial is affected with the right side of the body. So this is uncrossed. So remember in Arabic, the rule is faksan taban, which mean the jaw, the fak, lisan, which is the tongue, okay, going to taban, which is the affected part. Okay, so in Arabic, al fak lisan, in English or faksan, in English, remember that the tongue never lies. Okay? So here by these steps, you will decide if there is affection of cranial nerves, if there is uh, which side of the affection nerve affected, and if it is going with the same side of the weakness or not. And based on that, you can decide if it is an internal capsule or it is a cranial nerve, a uh, brainstem. The last point you will say to conclude your answer is, I will now mention which part of the brain affected. Please remember that the brain legion is conflicted on the opposite side. So let's say I decided that, okay, the left body part is affected. I see that the left body is affected. Remember, the answer should be starting by the opposite. I mean, the left body weakness, so my answer would be right something. If it is a right body weakness, so the answer will be left something. Whether it will be left internal capsule, will, would, or it will be left side of the brainstem. Okay? So again, let's say, this is example. Patient with weakness of the right side, with his tongue deviated to the right side. 
where is the legion? So here I will say the weakness on the right side, the, the, the hypoglossal affection on the right side. So this is uncrossed. So this is internal capsule. And because the body weakness is on the right, so the affection is for the left internal capsule. And that's it. Another example, patient with weakness on the left side and his right facial is affected. This will mean this is a crossed affection. And as we said, crossed affection mean brainstem legion. So I will say this is a crossed hemiplegia. So the lesion is in the brainstem with a fraction of the right facial nerve. You might add uh, which part of the brainstem based on the affected nerves, but usually mentioning that it's a brainstem is enough. Usually they will ask you about the possible causes of the hemiplegia. Okay, you can mention all the causes, you know, but when it is a young patient, remember trauma, remember AF, remember multiple sclerosis, remember vasculitis, remember drug abuse, remember bleeding tendency, because they like to ask this question, the causes of hemiplegia in young patients. Okay, the last thing as well, remember what you will examine in this patient, you will examine the motor in the upper limb and lower limb, you will examine the coordination in our limb and lower limb, and you will examine the sensory, superficial and deep sensation. And you need to practice that in the clinical part in order to do that very fast. You don't need to do everything in hemiplegia case, but you need to do as much as you can, okay, during your uh, examination, okay? For any question, please feel free to contact me. Our course is on Teachable. There is about 18 days at which we will discuss more than 100 cases with more than 350 slides, including algorithm and mnemonics. We will go through uh, all the topics that you might see in the exam. Please watch my free lectures to get an idea about uh, the way I'm explaining and training for pay. And, um, uh, uh, contact me through the Telegram or WhatsApp if you have any question regarding any topic or uh, about the course. Okay, doctors, uh, good luck. Remember, you don't need to have a specific date to join the course. You can join today and start a study today and the materials will be available for, th for 90 days instead of 60 days and ask, for, uh, ask the team for the discounts. Good luck, doctor, and have a great day.